Hello, it's Diane. I am finally ready to show you my Wizard of Oz journals. I mentioned in a previous video that I was working on these. One is for a custom order. I don't know which one. Um, she's going to get first pick after she sees this video. Uh, one is for my daughter. And the third one I thought I would keep, but I may sell it. It depends. Um, so if I decide to sell the extra one, I'll come back on and let you know. So I'm just going to start with this one. They all have very similar elements in them, but they are all quite different because of, you know, different pictures and things in them. Um, there are different sizes, so I'm going from the smallest to the largest. The only thing I have left to do is to make the bead dangle for, for this the largest one. I just have, I'll do that this evening while I watch TV. I have dangles in these. And I like this one. I like the way that one turned out. This one, um, it just looks too clunky. So I'm going to take these two larger pieces off and put some smaller ones at the top. And I'll use these on the other journal. I just think it has too many big things. So I'm going to just change that one a little bit. Okay, so this is made with a vintage Wizard of Oz book. <clears throat> You'll see the, looks like castles, but apparently it's supposed to be Oz, the land of Oz. And I used a, quite a few things. I've been saving pieces, um, papers, and all kinds of things for quite a long time. So I have the Graphic 45. I only had the 8x8, eight eight, um, what's it called, Magic of Oz. I had the 8x8 eight eight pa paper pad. Plus, I had two of the different um, chipboard pieces. So these are two of the chipboard pieces. It says there's no place like home. I just um, used my Cricut to cut a tag shape out similar to this shape and to back it with to make it stand out from the cover a bit. And then I put these three green gems on there. There's green fabric on the binding, a gold-colored rickrack, golden yellow. And then, of course, the dangle. I love this one. This one was sent to me by Jill. And some of these other bright colored ones also came from Jill. And this one that she made. It's rolled paper. And there's another one she made there. So thank you so much, Jill. You contributed a great deal to this. There's some book corners. Uh, one of the books had frayed corners, and so I thought if I was going to put the corners on one, I might as well put them on all. I like the way they look. So this, as I said, was a Wizard of Oz storybook. So I love the end paper. The back one has that gorgeous image on it. And you will see I, I use this image. This image was, was here, and I use that um, to put on the inside of one of those other books. So this is paper. Oh, I have it right here to show you that I've had for a long time. It's Paper House, The Wizard of Oz. I do not believe it is available anymore, but maybe you could find it online. Paper House, Wizard of Oz. And I love it because it has photo images of the movie. It has a lot of fun images, and there were two sheets of each design. So here's Dorothy and Toto. And I used scraps of that paper pad to tuck in these, these um, doily tuck spots that I made in each of the signatures. So I used my paper crimper and crimped this piece of green cardstock and made a banner, put a doily on it and one of the cardstock pieces. All of the cardstock pieces from Graphic 45 that I used inside the book I peeled because they are quite thick. So I didn't want that much bulk in the book, so I peeled them all. I left the cover ones the way they were. I also had some stamps from the Graphic 45 set, so I used them. And here's some lace stitched on. And if you saw my video about the master board, um, I will link it in the comments if you didn't get to see it. But this is a piece that I cut from the master board. There's a stamp that says this way, that way. So I turned this one into a pocket, glued on a little piece of rickrack. I also took shipping tags and I traced around the tag onto a page of the book, glued it, you know, cut it out, glued it on, and then added some green stamps, 
some other colors too on some of them. Some stamping and just a little edging with distress ink and a seam binding. So that can be journaled on the back. And there are quite a few of these tags in, in um, the books. And then there's this tag stuck in here. I didn't back all of the journaling cards. You could put a photo on them or you could glue pa paper on there that you can write on. I just did so much in these books. There's so much detail that I just had to call a halt at some point. So not all of the cards are backed with paper to write on. I also had a set of stickers. I've had them for quite some time. I bought them on clearance um, at Hobby Lobby, I think, a while ago, a couple of years ago at least. So I used those throughout the book. And then I had a calendar, a large calendar. I think it was 12 by 12 or even larger that my daughter-in-law daughter, ha daughter -in -law had bought for me for Christmas about five years ago. And I had saved those pages, so I used those pages in here. I had this stamp set that has these funky little wavy things and arrows and stuff um, that reminded me of Munchkin Land. On the back of the calendar page, of course, the, page, the images are upside down, plus I wrote on the calendar, so I covered all of that up. I had some Wizard of Oz books. This is one. This is this book, actually. So I used pages out of this. And this one is, well, that's not the cover, that's the back. The Emerald City of Oz. And the pages are white. So if you see white pages like this, it's from that book, The Emerald City of Oz. So you might see characters that you're not that familiar with because they're not in the Wizard of Oz movie. There are actually characters in the original Wizard of Oz book that aren't in the movie. And so this is the page from the Wizard of Oz book, and you can see the house on the cyclone. I used this clue sheet just because it's got green on it. There's, um, oh, and there's another book in here. I don't have the cover for that one, but it was a large, full color, really pretty images in this book. So I used quite a few pages. There's fabric here. A little collage there. Uh, I used book pages to make these little pockets. Hmm. I have to add a new tie to this one. That one came apart for some reason. It just tore right in half. Um, so I used my jelly bean soup die to make these little pockets, these little sacks and edged them with ink and glued them on as pockets. And then there's two in each signature, and there are nine signatures between the three books. So I will not be removing cards from all of them, but they all have either something glued on that says The Magic of Oz or a stamp. This is just a piece of green ledger paper, a green guest check. And there's the center of the signature. I used these yellow flowers cut from scrapbook paper for the centers of every signature. And I also used this napkin, decoupage it onto some cards for journaling um, because I thought they looked like poppies. I don't know if they are poppies, but that's what they reminded me of. And this is a um, catalog card, library catalog card, but it was a blank one. I've got a whole bunch of blanks, so I'm trying to use some of them. And I used one of my green garment pins there, and there's one of the stickers. This is vintage computer paper. You know, it sounds weird to say vintage computer paper, but we don't use this kind of computer paper anymore. Someone sent this to me. This one is a book page with a piece of fabric and a little piece of a doily stitched on there. This one is the calendar, and uh, I just used my Tim Holtz um, little words, and this one says home, heart, think, because I couldn't find one that said brain, and courage. Here's a circle I punched with from my uh, master board, and just glued it, or stapled it on there as a decoration. I thought this fabric kind of looked like the yellow brick road, even though they're more 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, hexagon. <laughs> I had to count the sides. Then, um, you know, bricks, but they're hexagon bricks. And there's some embroidery. There's a border stamp there. There's Toto. And this just has a glassine envelope that I got at the Hobby Lobby 75% off. I think I paid 99 cents for this pack of either six or eight envelopes. Um, and there's a coffee dyed index card in there and just a scrap of the designer paper that you can write on. And I glued it on as a pocket. There's another piece of the crimped paper and a gingham brad. And then some paint chips. I glued some journaling onto the back and there's a vintage bingo um, marker on there. Here's some of that uh, paper house paper with some glitter on it. There's a sticker of the Courage medal and the lion here. I'll try to go a little bit quicker so I can finish this book. The other two will have to be in a different video. Uh, master board here. This is just a sheet of a list paper to journal on and there's one of the tags I made with the stamps and the book page. I love the way they look. This can't, just came from a greeting card. It's just a decoration up there. It was covering up. Well, maybe it's not covering anything. Oh, it's scrapbook paper. It's patterned paper, so you couldn't write on it. I covered it all up, though. Here's the calendar. This is from the sticker sheet. It says, you say wicked like it's a bad thing. This is a little glassine envelope that I made. I have a roll of this glassine paper, and it was a little difficult to make an envelope with it because it just wanted to curl, but I managed it. There is an index card tucked in there. I'm not going to take it out. And I actually got out my embossing powder and embossed some of the cards, so it has an arrow. They're embossed with green glitter embossing powder. Some fabric there. This one has the Tin Man and the Heart. There's this um, chipboard piece that says Wicked. I punched out some of the corrugated green and then punched out some yellow flowers and just decorated with them. This is a piece of funky trim that uh, I can't remember who sent that to me, but somebody did. I want I, I'm not I was gonna say Lee, but I'm not sure because it's been a while. But it was fun in here. I believe that's a picture of Ozma, the flying monkeys. This corrugated paper there the, that I used my crimper on. Another piece of the master board. This scrapbook paper had some balloons, hot air balloons, so that was perfect. I took some of the Graphic 45 paper and cut up some of this thin brown paper and made little booklets. So there should be two booklets in each of the books, and that's a paint chip pocket. Another paint chip little envelope. There's nothing inside that envelope. You can tuck something in there. There's Glinda, the Good Witch of the North. I love this pocket. Um, this is the end papers for the large um, colored illustrated book and it was blue gingham so I added a little eyelet pocket here. I just thought that that gingham needed eyelet and then I made a journaling card with a page from the book and it says do you suppose Oz could give me brains there's another index card that I stamped and embossed on and I made a pocket with the glittered cardstock paper a little picture of the witch and a little piece of the corrugated paper. 
calendar page, a piece of the master board, and another of the little books. little glassine envelope. Oops, I didn't put the flowers on this one. I'll have to do that. Fabric and trims up here. little glassine bag with a tag in it. There's some washi tape throughout the books. There's another um, poppy card and a green garment pin. I thought this border stamp looked like poppies and the pods from the poppies. Again, there's a little envelope here with nothing in it. So, this is, um, I can't call it There's No Place Like Home because they all say that on the front. So I'm going to call this um, Emerald City because it does have the Emerald City behind it. So this is the Emerald City Oz book. Um, Annette, you can t let me know which one you like. So this is the Emerald City Oz book and I'll be back with the other two books.